Hello. Hello, please. Yeah, what's the problem, sir? Um, we've just closed down our farm track. Yeah. So, and, uh, feed our pheasants. We've come across a Range Rover with three people in it. Yeah. It appears that they're dead. I don't know what's happening. Blood in the motor all over them. back to a new video on the Essex Boys case. As always, if you are enjoying the content, please do give the video a thumbs up. And if you're interested in the Essex Boys case, or simply true crime in general, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. Now before I start this video, it's important for me to mention that the author does not seek to discredit any previous accounts or versions of events leading up to the gruesome murders. He merely offers an interesting alternative scenario to be considered. Saturday night in the clubs was a little better. The doctors had restored a fraction of confidence. The young girl had died from a weird combination of factors. The pill hadn't been poisonous. It had been something to do with a swelling of the brain, from consuming huge amounts of water too quickly. Funny that, because prior to the death of Leah Betts, the doctors had said that dehydration was one of the biggest risks to an all-night partygoers. Drink lots of water was meant to be an antidote to a bad trip. It was amazing to see how quickly and closely the young recreational drug users followed the story in the media. It was as if most of them were just waiting for the all clear to carry on with their use of the drug from the government. The police were still making their presence felt. So despite the confidence creeping back for the end users, the suppliers were still extremely cautious. It was fairly obvious the police would want to put a sizeable and credible head on the block eventually for the death of Leah Betts. If other firms were seeing a return to business slowly, then the Essex boys weren't. Everyone and his dog knew from whence the product had come. It was trial by ordeal for the firm, and they needed to do something to turn their fortunes. They might be today's news, but they would be tomorrow's chip paper, and they knew it. Porky Green had the Sunday morning pleasure of following Pat Tate. He was on his own, and his partner for the morning was having his usual quickie with his bit on the side. The surveillance had been going for a couple of weeks, and it had achieved nothing. Several people had been left battered or staggered out of meetings with the firm, but no one had said anything to the old Bill. The lists were compiled of who met who, the phone records of the players had been called up from the cellular network providers. The cross-referencing of who spoke to who would be done. There would be phone taps authorised, but they would be unlikely to produce much from the contract phones. The gang changed phones regularly and never said anything worth hearing on the listed phones they all had. No one was giving the old Bill any information. The fear was still sufficiently well in place to stop anyone coming forward. There had plenty of whispers and rumours and weren't complete fools. Sergeant Green had already marked Tony's card on a couple of wankers who had whispered in the ears of the old Bill. Sergeant Green had told Tony to wait before he made a move, so as not to cause any suspicion. Green had let Tucker know, so Tony would be cautious around the grasses. He could always extract his revenge later. Tony had agreed reluctantly. Pat, even more reluctantly when Tony relayed the information. Tony Tucker had slipped his police surveillance and was waiting to meet his inside man. Midday and Porky fell off Tate, his shift done, replaced by a couple of other cars. Porky had called his horny colleague and told him he would be over to collect him in an hour. Porky Green knew it was safe to meet Tony because he'd heard it on the radio. He knew the watchers had lost Tony Tucker. They'd planned to meet earlier in the morning. Tucker was getting restless and tired of being under surveillance. He wanted to meet his bent copper and find out how much longer this bollocks was likely to go on for. Bill knew the meet was planned and was set up ready for it. He had no idea how much of it they would actually get from the mobiles the pair both carried. If the pair got out of the cars and went for a stroll in the country, then very little. GCHQ were hooked into all the phones attached to both men, including the straight contract phone assigned to the bent policeman. Porky Green had tried to put the meeting off. Tony had been insistent. He wanted to talk, but wasn't going to talk on the phones. Porky had agreed and set the time and place, which Tony had gone along with. Tate and Rolf had discussed the merits of Porky with Tucker a few times during the crisis. They all considered the man a spineless wretch, but he was useful as long as he wasn't a risk. The other team had the location of Tucker from his mobile phone and told them Porky had just pulled up. 
Tucker must have seen him and got out of his car. The first thing the team heard was the door shut hard on the car occupied by Green, followed by a greeting from Tony. The audio was good. The burner phone Porky had was probably in the centre console and the pair were talking right over the top of it. This fucking surveillance is bollocks, mate. How much longer is it going to go on for? I mean, what do they expect to get? We're dying here, the fucking clubs are dead. And I need to start moving some fucking gear. Tony, we ain't going to pull you in for a couple of grams of coke, mate. Porky blubbered. He probably expected his usual sweetener from Tony. To be honest, Tone, we ain't got nothing on any of you. And I don't know what the fuck they expect from it. The kid's dead, and that's the end of it. We ain't going to get you at home with a big parcel of fucking pills which killed her, are we? It wasn't a question from Porky. It was a statement. The branch team now adopted the Essex boy's nickname for the bent copper, and he was referred to as Porky in the office. I told you, those fucking pills ain't even my business. I'll stick to the doors and the coke, and a bit of weed. I know, Tone, but the trouble is, the word on the street is the pills are from your firm, and your top dog, so they have you in the frame for it, mate. They have to be seen to be doing something. What else can they do? So how much longer is it going to last? What have they really got? Nothing, mate, honest. If there's anything solid, I'll tell you. Look, if they really had something, you'd have had a pull. It's all about us being seen to be doing something. So you lot are just following us about in the cars, is that it? What about the phones? You listening to them? Bugging my house, watching my old lady in the bath? No tone, don't be daft. This ain't James Bond. Look, we got a warrant to listen to the phones, but you know that. We got your phone records, we know you speak to. None of that's a problem. And you never talk business on the contract phones. The burners don't matter. If it ain't contracted to you, then it ain't your problem. Just be careful what you say on your contract phone. But you know all of that, mate. Yeah, yeah, of course I'm careful. So you got no fucking idea when this will end? No, mate. But it will end. We can't keep it up forever. Anyway, there's a firm in East London bringing in a big parcel of coke. It's coming in on a light aircraft and landing not far from here. Just thought I'd mention it to you. Just don't go investing in any coke that hasn't arrived here yet. As it's not going to make it, mate. I know this shit is hitting your business and I wouldn't want you to do any money on something which is fucked before it gets here. Bill hadn't a clue what Porky was talking about, but it had his interest. He had heard what the Nichols kid had told Tony and the gang on the Saturday. Tony Tucker's mind must have gone down the same road as Bill's. What's that then, mate? What do you know? Tell me. Tucker was probably trying to control his obvious interest. In his head, Tucker had probably already put two and two together and made ten. There wouldn't be that many shipments of cocaine landing in the Essex countryside in the immediate future, unless Richard Branson or Stelios had gone into business with the Colombians. Porky had let the cat out of the bag, and Tucker was definitely going to be pressing him for more information. If the East London firm was the one he hoped it was, then the thought of them all neatly wrapped up with a large cocaine importation would come in very handy. It would mean the removal of a massive competitor in the region and someone he owed a sum of money to. It was a win-win all round for Tony. He wouldn't be marking anyone's card this time. Look, Tone, we've been told a shipment is due in in a couple of weeks. It'll be a joint operation. Us and the Met Police, I guess. Someone ain't going to have a good Christmas, mate. But Tony, this is just to mark your card. You can't repeat this. If it ever got out where it's come from, I would be fucked. We'd both be fucked, mate. This is serious shit. Please, I shouldn't have said anything. Porky was probably regretting mentioning what he just had. It was obvious Tony was interested and Porky was sounding like he wanted to backpedal. It was too late for that. Tony had the thread of it and Porky would have to keep blabbering they had started. So what exactly is the deal? Who are the suppliers? And who's going to get their collar felt? I need to know the facts here, mate, and accurately. This could affect me. I might be doing other types of business with these people. I'd need to protect my interests. You understand that, don't you, mate? You know, I help people out. You know, I lend a bit of money out, that sort of thing. If people owed me had a problem come in, it would help me to know about it. You know, protect my financial position. Obviously, I ain't going to let anyone else know that I know. It's just, well, I can make sure things don't affect me. You understand that, don't you, mate? Yeah, I understand, Tone. But this don't leave this car. What I'm about to tell you. You promise? Pathetic is how Porky sounded to the watchers. To Tony, it would have been the same. The man was weak, and he was going to give up all he knew. What the watchers and Tony didn't know at this moment was that Porky had been told there were undercover officers involved. 
If you mention that, they might well be at risk. Porky obviously never gave a thought for their safety. He just wouldn't mention that element. It would make it alright for his treacherous conscience, leaving that bit of information out. You have my word, Paul. Not a word to anyone. Just my ears only, mate. Tucker probably put his hand on Porky's shoulder. All paternal. Whatever. Porky was his boy. His bitch. Alright, Tone, okay, listen. Now, we had this guy down from the Met on Friday. They have intelligence. Probably got air traffic control on it or something, I guess. Anyway, the shipment is due in about two weeks. We'll get the definite heads up, as we're going to be in on the operation about four or five days in advance. It's a joint operation, Essex and the Met Police. It's landing in a field in Rettenden, and they know exactly where as well. And they know where it's coming in exactly? Hmm, showed us on a map. Fuck me, knacker, didn't they? And when's that due? Not for a couple of weeks, I mean, they'll know exactly nearer the time. And we'll get all the details when they're ready to go, I guess. You're sure they'll know exactly when it's coming in? Yeah, 100%. I guess they'll be looking to nick everyone in the frame at the same time. So we'll have to have a bit of notice, you know, get everyone banged to rights. It's standard stuff, mate, you know how it works. All the doors go in the same time, and we round them all up in one go. Sometimes a few slip through the net, but we ain't perfect. Porky laughed as he tried to make the last comment sound like a joke. And you are 100% your firm will be in on the shout. You know that. Fuck me, Tone, yes, I told you. It's just a courtesy, mate, it's how it works. They can't mount some big deal like this on our patch and not involve us. Yeah, all right. Of course, you know how it works. And it will do everyone a fucking favour. What? How's that? Tony sounded like his thoughts were suddenly somewhere elsewhere. Well, it makes us look good. You know, the old Bill. And we'll probably just back off your mob. I mean, if we land a big fish with a pile of cocaine flying into the country, nick a naughty firm out of the East End, bang to riots. Well, it works for all of us, don't it? We look good. You get forgotten about. Everyone wins. Well, we do anyway. I mean us. Yeah, you're right, mate. But this is just between you and me, Paul, right? Thanks for the heads up, mate. I, I really do appreciate it. The usual bollocks lasted for a little longer, but nothing of any serious interest to the watchers. What do you make of that then, Sarge? Tony Fermin asked Bill. Bill thought for a moment before answering. Not sure. It's giving our man something to think about, though. I think we're going to have to make sure the Met knows that their operation's blown. The thing is, what's Tucker going to do? I mean, he may stay quiet, but if the firm involved is who we think it is, then for him it's a result. They ain't going to be worrying about 100 grand that he owes them. The bigger thing is, though, who are the suppliers? Have they been paid? Is the gear on bail? Still, I guess none of that's our concern. If the mob out of Canning Town are all about to get seriously nicked on a massive cocaine importation, then our Essex firm of slags might just come through this one, yeah. You've been listening to the book Once Upon a Time in Essex. This book is available to purchase online at Amazon and other online book retailers. Many thanks for joining me for this video. Very shortly you'll be able to see some other videos from the channel, including the Essex Boys playlist, which has all of the videos concerning this case in one convenient folder. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I look forward to seeing you all again in the next video. Take care. Cheers.